Hi and welcome back to another episode of Meeting the Farm right here on Revolution Radio Freedom Subs.com. It's also heard on TammyPepperman.org. We are a listener and reader, watcher, witness supported. Um, if you would like to donate, please visit us at our respective stations, freedomslips.com. Click on our support pages. Of course, TammyPepperman.org. Our support pages go to Tamworth Web Development. And, um, wow, that business to take care of. Uh, first and foremost, um, we're going to be avoiding all the securities more during a recall and an unwind. And I direct the treasurer to enact this globally on the new day. Infants have evidenced themselves via doctrine of election to be in need of service, wherein I, the sovereign, and vote parents would try by which to serve the needs of humanity and psychopathy alike, both having evidenced the inability to care for themselves and each other, wherein I have no other option than to do that for you. For those currently under quarantine and or deport deportation measure, Realtors are on the ground to help you settle your account with the United States and ease the transition of this big move wherein if you have any remainder assets of any kind, these will go with you to your new resident location. There's nothing to worry about if you have not created a massive debt balance owing to the United States. And of course you can only do that by perpetrating harm upon any human being superfluous harm on life on this planet, dirtying up my water and air, and harming all life. You won't be held accountable for these things if you have not done those things. Sioux Falls have a new flag it's being reported on slate. Beautiful flag. I really like that with the. Uh, it appears to be heaven on one side and hell on the other. It's a nice uh, symbol. And there's been responses to the New York Times editorial board calling for the marijuana. Prohibition to end. New York Times has not been calling to legalize marijuana under any other state. They've been calling to end the federal prohibition on marijuana. There's a big difference. The federal government said that uh, anyone caught using or growing marijuana, which is their patented product, is undercutting the federal government. Well, what happened was the federal government is insolvent. It has no authority to make laws, uh, speak, or do anything else that is indicative of a government outside of basically what is the color of law. Congress is bankrupt. Congress and its uh, puppeteers, puppet masters, and puppets has evidenced itself to be a gang of infants. Recently, its general counsel attempted mass genocide on humanity and psychopathy alike, and ended up making, it, making itself sick. General Council in Sierra Leone and other places in Africa are under quarantine because it made itself ill in the attempted genocide 
of human life. Congress is no longer in any capacity to act as any type of authority, government, lawmaking body, political body, or any other. It has only evidenced itself as mentally incompetent, infant in its nature, in desperate need of someone to care for it. Kim Jong-un, North Korea, has been helping us out here caring for these mentally deficient beings. This place, there's nothing that compares to North Korea. I mean, he's, Kim Jong-un is amazing when it comes to technical innovation, when it comes to Tourism. North Korea is a, is a absolutely astounding place that promotes tourism. North Korea also promotes rights of the individual. North Korea is known as a republic. Wow. It's a beautiful place. And it's, it's absolutely heaven for those that enjoy that type of government feature, structure. That, that's what it's all about. Our revelation, we go to our respective heavens. Now, one is not for me. I don't like all that gambling stuff. I don't like, uh, you know, the shiny lights and the bells and whistles of things. I don't like tourism. You know, that's just not for me. But that is for others. It's a beautiful, absolutely astounding place. And, and watching it, as Kim Jong-un has been building it the last couple of years, has been just, it's, it's beautiful. We just opened up a, a summer camp. Um, AD summer camp for kids. They've got the best ski resort I've ever seen. It's just an amazing place to visit or or live. For those that so wish uh, to live there, I mean, that's just it's beautiful. U.S. U.N. is everybody's playing their games. Um, by the way, this uh, iron dome thing to play on words it's the iron domicile that needs to be shut down the United States Incorporated are bankrupt they don't own any iron domiciles they don't own any place of protection and uh, I iron domicile which they've renamed into Iron Dome Missile Defense is, is done. That's not allowed under the public law. If you want to play with those things, you need to grow up. And as we've seen, when the United States Incorporated has things and toys in their hands that could be harmful for humanity and themselves alike, they end up committing suicide and under quarantine for releasing a plague upon themselves. They're not allowed to play with missiles. They're not allowed to play with nuclear warfare, nuclear power plants. They're not allowed to play with dams. Nothing. Nothing. They're not big enough. They're not grown up enough to, to handle those things without harming themselves, as they've evidenced. Now, over and over again, I've been warning you. 
know, do this. Take care of these things. You were not adult enough to do that. You're still a very impulsive entity. It doesn't matter how old you are. Henry Kissinger. When he put on his big boy pants back in 1974 and said the human depopulation is going to be the best business model, those pants were just a little bit too big for Dr. Henry Kissinger. He evidenced himself as nothing but a child, a very impulsive child that wanted to get what he wanted to get right now without ever, ever thinking about the consequences of that decision. That that evidence is a child. It simply is not my child. That child is unbound. It does not speak the truth. It does not know the truth. It doesn't need to be around me or in my kingdom. That's disgusting. That's Congress is the same. Acting on impulse without questioning the consequences of your actions is the actions of an infant. Uh, there's a requirement under the treaties on the law of infants. Somebody steps in and saves you from yourself. I've had plenty of knowledge. However, this time, when I provided you notice that what you were doing was harmful for humanity, you continued doing that. That evidence is that you did that with intent. And that goes outside the realm of infancy into now criminality. So with knowledge and intent, you continued to perpetrate the same harm. That requires accountability under the public law. Now again, we are trying to make this transition as smooth and uneventful as possible. And that means that everything will be accounted for. If you have any remaining assets, they'll go with you. And um, that's after your assets are foreclosed upon and, and divided up in order to compensate humanity for what you have been doing against it. That's, that's what accountability is. And that was under your own laws, ignorance of the laws, no excuse, 46 uh, USC 313, 25 through 41, 42. That's all written in your own law. And all of these agents that are whining and carrying on, that's an irritant. If you are collecting and disseminating national security information to the betterment of national security, you're going to end up being arrested immediately. You don't have any more chances or options. I provided you with knowledge, showed you what espionage is. As a sovereign state, if you are collecting and disseminating state secure information contrary to state security, which means the betterment of humankind, the well-being of humankind, you're going to be stopped from doing that. Uh, you know, you're, you're only biting yourself in your own backside when you're doing this now. It's only getting worse for you. And accountability keeps adding up. If you want to have things when you get to your new resident location, you need to stop harming and creating that debt. It's not a good idea. Obamacare hits a new low in popularity. Yes, it's going to be gone. Nationalized health care is something that you can probably get in North Korea. There's necessity of those things there. Retirements, betting on anything, insurance, all of those things can be found in North Korea. That's, you know, I didn't uh, 
touch that your heaven. If that's what you enjoy, then you know we need to uh, move along now. I don't want you in my kingdom. You're you're under order for deportation. You're either going to be for or against me. There is no other option anymore. So. Barney Frank on Obamacare rollout, quote, they just lied to the people, that's on the Washington Times, of course, Barney Frank, Barney Frank, oh, Commonwealth Games, I don't really pay attention to, yeah, so the headline on the New York Times editorial board, there was a call for an end to the federal prohibition, on marijuana. Now, one of the most profound things that's written in the text is 1 Corinthians 6. Let me go get that up for you because um, it's very important for everybody to um, know what 1 Corinthians 6 has to say. Sorry about that, folks. I didn't have it pulled up yet. <coughs> so, the New York Times, of course, is asking for the repeal on prohibition. At 1 Corinthians 6, 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers? I know there's a lot of um, locational construct in there. However, what this is saying is that the witnesses are the judges. And those very same witnesses, of course, are also described in Revelation as candlesticks. They light the way. And as soon as they realize their actual position, they're also called the angels. Now the media prior to the public law was of course also described as Jezebel. Well, she just had the wrong information. She had the absolute opposite to the truth which is consensus reality, consensus creation, artificial intelligence. These were things were provided by none other than the directors of the former corporation. These directors, of course, are such as John Forbes Carey and Senator Dianne Feinstein. Barbara Boxer, John Corn, and you can go on into the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee and the uh, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. But the media, those angels were supposed to be the judges. That's how it all works. The, the, if the media is not presenting that you know there, there's uh, 
sick and new things to play with. You know, all of these perverted things and perverted con concepts. Well, the media is not presenting those things, so then there's no tree of knowledge. You know, for those that want to buy concepts, there's a tree of knowledge in North Korea. I just don't want it in my kingdom. And I'm very, very, very happy to see the new media. I'm seeing the truth in all its glory. It doesn't matter how bad it hurts or what it does to the ego, it's still the truth, and that overcomes everything. Overcomes everything. It also simplifies everything. It is the epitome of efficiency. There's no other steps. The shortest line between two points at the truth is relativity. There's no line between the two points. There's no two points. So you always want to go directly to the most efficient truth in all things. And that is, you know, according to Occam's razor. The most efficient, the shortest, shortest distance between two points. This provides absolute efficiency, economics. And it's a guarantee, there's no bet on that one. There's no hedging that one. You never lose. The truth never loses. So we dealt with all that. Um, I found an article on Forbes today that was so beautiful. Astronomers puzzle over a new breed of massive stars. Like fireflies sparkling on a hot August night, the universe's most massive stars run the gamut of their lives in a cosmological blink of an eye. The most massive stars known, the rare hot O3 spe spectral type, burn through their hydrogen in something like a million years. Many morph into even rarer will fry at stars for a half a million years or so before ending their lives as type 2 core collapse supernovae. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures. If you want more as to the metaphysical aspect of uh, the astrophysical, and learn more crystal links. I always got quite an encyclopedia over at uh, crystal links to learn more about the meta and uh, what others define as esoteric. Let's see here. Covered the flag and, and uh, New York Times. It is so beautiful to see the truth. You know, there's been such a uh, such a depressive force. Having genocidal maniacs as the former government, and um, they've made everything illegal as a construct for a business model. And uh, you can observe this as is evidenced in 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72.11 all kinds of commercial kidnapping, drug use, contraband, uh, prostitution. That's one of my biggest beefs is it you know, if you look at the dynamics of the end result of fourth generation warfare upon humanity and the structure of legal marriage, you find that those relationships are always prostitution. One is exchanging love for something else and one is exchanging sex for love. And, um, and that's a 
that's basically the only way you could fornicate, you know, giving your body to a landlord of it, somebody who views it as an object. It doesn't matter what sexual preference you have, it doesn't matter what color you are, if you, if you give your body to another to be the owner of it, that, that's always a form of prostitution. And that's not good. If you give your mind to another in exchange for something, you're still acting as a prostitute for that thing. I mean, you're not slaves. You're not prostitutes. You know, one of the, the most profound was um, Shakespeare. Let me see if I can find that one. I think it was um, Sonnet 51. Sorry about that, folks. I'm going to be clicking for a moment. Fifty-seven. Sonnet fifty-seven looks like. Being your slave. Being your slave, what should I do but tend upon the hours and times of your desire? I have no precious time at all to spend, nor services to do till you require. Nor dare I chide the world without end hour, whilst I, my sovereign, watch the clock for you nor think the bitterness of absence sour. When you have bid your servant once adieu, nor dare I question with my jealous thought where you may be or your affairs suppose. But, like a sad slave, stay and think of not. Save where you are, how happy you make those. So true a fool is love that in your will, though you do anything, he thinks no ill. If you're jumping through hoops for somebody and rushing out to do that honeydew list, you're not living in a mutual marriage, you're living in a state of prostitution. You're entered into a slave master relationship. If that's well, it's not your choosing. You know, in contemplation, if if an infant is being abused and allowing itself to be abused because it doesn't know any better, then I mean, I'm going to have to pick it up and deal with those things. So. We're going to be doing that under parents, but try as well. Um, if somebody's acting as a slave to another, there's no presumption of consent because if it knew it was a slave, it wouldn't be there. It's under some kind of indoctrination. We're going to get rid of that. Psychiatrists are also being deported. We don't have a requirement for those types of things in the kingdom. These are not uh, economically sound for the well-being of humanity. interesting. These days are, are absolutely interesting. You know, it, it, I've gotten so many agents this last week in the background, and, and they're so upset about the move. Wait a second, you're going to where you enjoy doing the same things that you're doing now, except for you get to do them there, and it's legal there. It's what you wanted. It's what you asked for in the 1941 Atlantic Charter. It's what you asked for when you were using that form of governance. 
it was evidence that you were using that form of governance or you like it. Otherwise you wouldn't have been using it. That, that, uh, that's something very important because it, everything is within everyone has free will. So if you're choosing to do something, I'm not going to take that away from you. I'm going to give it to you. If you like that burden, it's going to be your burden. I don't like that burden. It's not going to be my burden. It's not going to be the burden of my children. Hmm. Interesting stories. Weird stories. Besser College was originally founded as a women's college in 1861. And this is being reported on Forbes, of course. If everybody remembers, Gelnhausen Charter says, no, you guys forgot all about that, but uh, that was during the, uh, the model theory on feminism during the French Re Revolution. So during that model, business model, it was studied at Vassar and other places that promoted feminism. The business, it's a business uh, concept of a product. That's where it was observed and then uh, put into action, of course. And that's, that's also why we have uh, foreclosed on all of the colleges because they were. Uh, formerly providing indoctrination that is not conducive to life, human life. Colleges are conducive to um, business. So they don't have a place in my kingdom. If you want to go to college, you can find colleges in North Korea. Kim Jong-un has colleges. Well, it has all of this stuff that you guys enjoy. It doesn't, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, and to all of these feminists, you know, go to North Korea. They've got lots of amenities. Yeah, back to school shopping. There's going to be none of that. Um, there's only deprogramming centers in my kingdom. We're not going to be indoctrinating children any longer. Except for in North Korea. We can have education there. First U.S. Ebola patient has arrived in Georgia. Uh, this is being shared from the Wall Street Journal.com. The breaking news piece, um, let's see, one hour ago. A patient being treated at Emory University Hospital. That's good. Um, first of two Americans infected with Ebola in Liberia arrived here Saturday to receive treatment for the deadly illness, reports WallStreetJournal.com. Dr. Kemp Brantley was flown on a chartered jet specially equipped with a containment area for patients with infectious diseases that landed before noon at Dobbins Air Reserve Base northwest of the city. He was then put in a white ambulance with red and blue markings along with the police escort and taken to Emory Hospital about 14 miles away. Dr. Bradley, who was infected while working at an Ebola treatment center operated by two U.S. faith-based organizations, walked into Emory on his own accord, said Todd Sheriff spokesman for Samaritan Purse, one of the charities running the clinic. Mr. Shearer said he did not know the medical condition of the 33-year-old doctor from Texas. An Emory spokesman would not comment on the patient's status. Another charity worker at the center, Nancy White Wrightful, who had been helping decontaminate, decontaminate workers, also has been infected and is expected to arrive at Emory for treatment in coming days. 
Bruce Hebner, an infectious disease doctor and head of a special isolation unit at Emory University Hospital, said Friday there were good reasons to airlift the two to Emory. Quote, we can deliver a substantially higher level of care, a substantially higher level of support to optimize the likelihood that those patients will survive this episode, end quote, he said. Dr. Ribner added that he was, quote, cautiously optimistic, end quote, the two have a good chance of recovery once they reach Emory and that the transfer would be safe. Emory University Hospital houses a specialty built iso specially built isolation unit equipped to treat patients exposed to jed deadly infectious diseases. The 12-year-old clinic previously treated a patient with SARS, which swept through multiple countries in 2003. The unit is separate from other patient areas and its staff is highly trained. Dr. Brantley and Mrs. Ms. Wrightbull are among more than 1,323 people who have been infected with Ebola since February in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. The escalating outbreak has underscored the challenge of, of quelling a deadly disease in countries with poor health infrastructure, suspicions of Western medicine, and burial rates in which families handle the still contagious corpses of their loved ones promoting the disease's spread. Of the infected, 729 have died. Though the arrival of two Ebola patients to an American city had many concerned, U.S. officials said the risk of spread in the U.S. is low. CDC, based just down the road from Emory University Hospital, will be regularly consulting with Emory. CDC has warned doctors in the U.S. to be on the lookout for Ebola symptoms in people who have traveled recently to West Africa. Ebola, whose symptoms can begin with fever and nausea and progress to internal bleeding, has been known to kill up to 90% of those it infects. It spreads through contact with bodily fluids. There is no vaccine or cure. Patients are not infectious until they are sick, and even when they begin to develop symptoms, they aren't highly contagious, experts say, infectious experts say. The most contagious patients are those who are very sick and unlikely to be moving around much, they say. So we need to make sure that anyone in contact with general counsel, guardian ad litems, attorneys, congress members, um, brokers, anyone in contact with general counsel for prolonged periods of time needs to be tested for Ebola so that we can reach a level of containment that allows humanity to be well. Idiots. Simply idiots. This is this is ridiculous. So we're watching as general counsel and its medical personnel basically what amounts to committing suicide. This is unacceptable. There's a requirement now to take any and all reins and, and care for these infants. They are not smart enough to handle things of these natures. I wouldn't take something of this nature and, and spread it about the, the world in anticipation that it's a good business uh, model there. And now General Counsel, who is attempting mass genocide upon the human populace, are now dying of this godforsaken disease, virus, plague. I mean, I don't know how to reach you. It's 
ridiculous. You know, what, 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 how do you, how do you, you know, protect a child that, that, that it's, you know, that's not just a, a child playing with matches, burning down a forest. It's equivalent to that. But your negligence has now caused an unprecedented amount of damage and injury to all, to all things. I mean, this is this isn't the, the 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 end of the Ebola outbreak. This is the very beginning. It's been festering for for months now and growing dormant. That stuff lays dormant for three months at a time. And in fact, it could act as the, the, the atomic bomb. You're not thinking here. So we're, we're going to take the reins. And uh, our, our beings, our cabinet is going to take care of this. And, and again, um, whatever the, the treasure requires, you've got full authority in commissioning whatever needs to occur. Whatever is going to benefit humanity and, and take away this this blight. Got some really neat weather patterns recently. Slate's also reporting uh, Mesocyclone, mesocyclone over Colorado looks like a UFO. It's just so pretty. Um, all of these things, uh, wind and, and uh, temperature variants, can I mean, it's just profound, beautiful. It's a pretty puppy. Um. You know, we're still dealing with these airline things. Uh, if not now, is reporting that uh, they're seeing anti Semitism in Europe. Um, I, you know, we want more investigation on that. We'll call out uh, law enforcement for a compliance audit. Um, see what's going on. I have a feeling that these are just the same agents doing the same thing. I doubt it's it's um, you know within any sect. I haven't seen any evidence that humanity hate each, hates each other. So why don't we go ahead and pick up those agents and and um, see what they're about. Shake them down. See who their directors are. Whatever needs to occur, we need to do that. Um, Israel is going after Hamas. Hamas, of course, is another uh, corporation traded in the District of Columbia as much as Israel, so they're just playing uh, Hegel, Hegelian dialectic here. Uh, one burns down the rice tag, and the other one points the finger over at somebody else who burned down the rice tag, and they both run away and cash in on this. So we're not going to play this game anymore. Uh, national and federal uh, state both we're going to be foreclosing on. Um, immediately we need to uh, go ahead and void out all those securities and then we'll start again on the new day and uh, we'll stop that from occurring. I don't want to see that occurring any longer. Pro-Palestinian demonstration forms in front of the White House. It's pretty. We don't want to take up any title. We want human at its well-being and uh, no more of those protests and uh, petitioning or preying on or toward uh, that, that, that former landlord there. It's a Lord God, its name is Satan. Uh, praying to it uh, allows you the result of uh, praying to Satan. It brings down hell upon you. If you really want hell, you can 
go elsewhere and, and be part of the deported. Uh, they're on their way out. But uh, don't bring that here. Uh, of course, Obamacare stems from Nationalized Health Care Act. There's Congress, so we're not going to play any more games and, and blame Obama. He's just a mouthpiece. It's always been a mouthpiece, and that's, you know, Congress is, is asking for the arrest of him and calling him out as a rat. Well, he needs to be protected. They're threatening the president. Isn't that a crime? You want to take care of that thing and uh, stop any potential losses and, and cut the risk there. Lots of stuff on marijuana today. It looks like the um, average human, uh, they're no longer a bird, sorry about that. Uh, it looks like humanity uh, enjoys marijuana and that's good to see because it can feed so many. Hemp, hemp grows very, very quickly. It's a great food source. Um, it's also amazing to uh, build with. It's a great building material in, in the form of hempcrete. Uh, there's actual evidence, absolute evidence of uh, its ability, uh, its curative power, curative ability, and um, we want to see that growing freely. And um, benefiting humanity and, and you know that ends starvation and homelessness you know don't shut up my kingdom you don't tell my kingdom what to grow what it can grow when it can grow it uh, there, there's to be no more geoengineering there's to be no more cloud seeding I don't have a requirement of those things um, there's no more control of the environment itself or habitat uh, those things are all done again we're going to avoid out all of the securities and we're going to do an un uh, unwinding and um, what that will do is, is uh, allow the uh, that's the resurrection I mean that's a, the actual word for that would be resurrection to, to be able to enable it standing again so we're going to go ahead and call out the resurrection. And um, 296 children in Gaza have been killed as Israel vows to continue action on the RT 23 minutes ago. Again, I'm not going to stand for that. Uh, Israel it needs to go. Its uh, corporation is being foreclosed on. And any and all actors held accountable uh, for their works. And again, uh, if you need uh, real tours, call on them uh, at this time. Uh, we do need real tours on the ground to enable this transition in the most efficient manner possible. Um, they'll determine and assess uh, values and, and uh, I mean all assets and, as well as uh, what, what's left over if there's any remaining. Of course, the uh, deported can take it with them wherever they're going. Um, it's highly doubtful they don't have a debt that, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know. You know, I'm seeing Ford back in the news here and there, just little bits at a time. Uh, I want a compliance audit and see what's going on there, who they're funding, because. Uh, Israel is still perpetrating and there's somebody uh, on the back end uh, supplying funding for that stuff so I want the uh, whoever the funding source is foreclosed upon immediately and uh, we got to take care of that first and foremost <coughs> excuse me uh, there's no such thing as immigrants uh, we're gonna do away with that stuff. We're going to take it through the, um, the uh, Treasury and the Marshal. We'll be determining who lives where within the coming uh, time.
time period, if you can call it that, at the end of that, then uh, there's no necessity for ICE and related departments and programs. It's an unnecessary thing. Extra DNA, yeah, that's that's a good one. And we already covered the Ebola patient, and this is just um, interesting. Interesting. We're not going to attack anybody's culture. Looking at um, uh, media presentations about uh, MP attacking culture of waste write offs and, and failure, we're not going to indoctrinate culture. So we're not going to, you know, indoctrinate the concept of, of the useless bread gobbler. There's, there's no more of that concept. Uh, Humanity doesn't have any useless bread gobblers. Attorneys aren't that efficient, and um, that needs to be dealt with. But humanity is not going to be exposed to future indoctrination efforts, where the concept of uh, human productivity is even brought forth. Human being does not have to be productive in order to evidence its life. It already is. So we're not going to play those games. Uh, that that uh, competition, competition in Olympics, all of those things. We're going to have those now in North Korea. Any and all forms of competition, uh, Olympics, gambling, uh, you know, slots, cards. All of those things. Uh, now that's that's Kim Jong Un's playground. That that kind of thing is over there. You can take it over there, and uh, everything's, you know, the, the the net is there. Everything's is there. You know, your move is not going to be painful. The only pain that you're feeling right now is emotional as to what you're experiencing in the ego, the super ego, and the id. You feel offended. Um, that's what an infant does. It feels offended. So you have to grow up and put on your big boy, big girl pants. Or, uh, you know, otherwise you can just stay an infant. It's, it's very, very easy. Uh, I really like the, um, Presentation of the Matrix. The Matrix, uh, those movies are pretty good movies, and I didn't even watch them until just a, a couple of years ago because I never had any interest. But uh, once I watched them, I, I found them to be very, very uh, enlightening. And um, you know, if you if you need the the, the uh, artificial womb, which is what that is, the Matrix, uh, you can find one. You know, North Korea is a very, very comfortable place. It's not, uh, it's very nice for those who want to go and gamble and play and, 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 and do all of those things that you're used to doing. It's not a, um, there's no limitations, you know, it's just you're under the uh, republic. You're going to be under the republic's rules. Laws and the, those are determined, of course, by uh, the leader, which is Kim Jong Un and, and his staff. And um, in that, it's it's comfortable for those who like to play. You know, it's just uh, it's interesting to see. Interesting to see. I've been reading a lot of. Scripture again lately, of course, and um, well, I'm seeing such beauty in the the um, ascension of 
of the Archangel Michael. These things are just super proud to see now. And that, uh, morning star. If the morning star is risen, there's no need for light. No need for, uh, sun. No, the, the evening star is risen, of course, that always goes dark. But, uh, morning star does not go dark. It's interesting. So, plan of action is first priority would be Israel's iron domicile. You need to look into that. They're calling it the Iron Dome Missile Defense. That word is actually Iron Domicile. And uh, Compliance Audit should let us know what they're, they're up to there. Because um, Congress doesn't get its own bubble. Congress does not get its own bubble. It does not get its own anything to uh, stop its accountability for its works. So and we'll be right back, folks. Stick around. And welcome back to the second hour of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomsubs.com, where information never sleeps, as well as TammyPepperman.org. No Borders Radio, you can find that at TammyPepperman.org. We are listener, reader, uh, watcher, supported, witness supported. And if you'd like to donate, please visit us at our respective uh, web locations www.freedomslips.com and of course tammypeppermen.org um, Before the break we were talking about government. Now in this model the kingdom, the most efficient or precise as it's the, the least oppressive I could never explain if I sat down and, and, and spoke about it for, for, for d days and years. Um, I still can't explain that this 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 kingdom is at least oppressive because it is not oppressive. Um, I don't want put pressure on anybody. Uh, my function is to remove pressure from whatever is being pressed on. And uh, in the relative manner, that it's the, the equivalent to lifting a millstone. I don't want to see the, a millstone around the neck of, of a being that does not have the accountability to wear that thing. Those aren't supposed to be slapped on children when they're born. Most stones aren't to be slapped on a husband if it accidentally marries a psychopath. It's not good because his intentions were not to marry a psychopath. His intentions to marry who he thought he was 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 marrying a wife, a helpmate, his companion, his his uh, complement, and, and that's what a, a husband or a wife is. It's a complement. It, it helps the other. It complements the other. It doesn't not uh, stroke the ego or give compliment. Compliment is, is equal as the other. It's the other part of the other. So we don't want to have any of that fornication stuff going on in the kingdom. Um, it's not right in any way, shape, or form. Well, if you want to learn about the construct of civil society, a treatise 
on government. There's actually two uh, treaties on two governments, and uh, these were written by Locke, John Locke. Uh, he lived between 1632, 1704. The second treatise of civil government, of course, has in it the of the state of nature. Chapter 2 of the State of War, Chapter 3 of Slavery, Chapter 4, 5 is of Property, 6 is of Paternal Power, 7 is of Political or Civil Society, of the Beginning of poli Political Societies, of the Ends of Political Society and Government, of the Forms of the Commonwealth, of the Extent of the Legislative Power. All of these things can be found in the treatises. The treatise is the binding of something. It's usually, you know, when you're considering a psychological creation, <laughs> the containment unit, excuse me, or the container that it rests in is called a treatise. It just says what the boundaries are of the created construct. You can find the uh, state of being human is absolutely in opposition to human nature. Human nature is described in the treatise on human nature by David Hume, creating that uh, product. Human nature, of course, is a product. It's not a state of being such as a human being. So if you want to get to the foundation of all things, you want to read through the treatises. I, I put a lot up at TammyPepperman.org in the book sections. Um, there's a lot, you know, of course, freely accessible across the internet web, and more will come available as we lift these oppressive forces off of you and, you know, flush out all these rats. And until we flush out all these rats, of course, um, there's still going to be a level of constraint or the level of, of uh, human trafficking, but not as bad as it was, and it will be lifted immediately as soon as I find its location. All these things are just uh, profound to be realizing. Our numbers look great. Um, without a government, our return is, is just absolutely profound. There's absolutely no overhead. And um, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. We don't want any overhead. We don't want any, any risks. Of course, always, always, always the truth will set you free. The truth is everything. That's all there is. You now, vacations for Americans is being reported, of course. And that's just sad. Just sad, you know. Um, you're replacing actual happiness with what results from duty and obligation. And, and that's a, the greatest uh, psychological warfare upon you is being taught first duty and second obligation. And you were taught that, of course, by your captors, Congress, in Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation, humanity was pledged and charged to discharge congressional bankruptcy. So the first thing, as a pledge, a new pledged asset, first thing that I have to do is indoctrinate you to act and behave as a pledged asset, a product. Now to do so, you must be indoctrinated to act and behave as 
a pledged asset. That's a guarantee. That's risk management. All right, in that state, if you're taught duty and obligation, you, you are now a self-contained pledged asset. From educational indoctrination, you, you make yourself run because you are now bound by duty an obligation and at the other end of that your reward is this perceived happiness so that, that's not happiness it's not happiness to get done with a 60 hour work week and feel elated that you just got done with the 60 hour work week you were used as a farm animal for 60 hours that, that's not happiness usually that feeling is exhaustion after being a slave for 60 hours. That is not the state of being. That is a constructed nature and it needs to be uh, deprogrammed. These things are not going to be used upon m my children. Programming of any kind that creates product out of uh, a human being is, is unlawful on its face. It's warfare. I want my children to be at the state of happiness. And, and it, the state of happiness is when my children are at rest. And they're not moved by compulsion, compulsive behavior. And they're not moved by impulse. The impulse is absolutely unlawful on its face. Statutes or statements of compulsion are unlawful on their faces. These things uh, are not going to be occurring in my kingdom. These things are not uh, lawful. They're not adhering to the public law, which means do no harm. You're not going to be any longer converting human beings into negotiable instruments. There's absolutely no exchange where that can happen anymore. And again, Treasury is going to be taking over the Securities and Exchange Commission because the Treasury is the only one with commission ability at this time, anywhere. You are not going to have my children as pledged assets. They, they are not pledged assets. Now we took care of all of those things. Um, Nicholas, Christoph, my column on how time in the wilderness can be a salt for the soul. And you can find that on New York Times. And Nicholas says, see you on the trail. It is now time to start believing. It's now time to start enjoying your be living your habitat and your environment that was formerly infested with attorneys and your adversary that infestation will be under containment as soon as possible so um, Interesting. Again, I'm not seeing any Oh, uh, we did a compliance audit of Johnson & Johnson this week. It's very nice to see the reactive uh, and the results of that. Procter & Gamble to drop up to 100 brands. We said uh, we want a, an internal compliance audit. 
and whatever is harmful to human beings will be removed from the uh, product line and manufacture. So we'll see how that's working out. It looks like uh, Procter and Gamble are, are uh, being on the up and up here, and we'll see how that goes. Um, now that uh, if it's it's harming, it's not going to be allowed to be uh, acting under commerce in any way, and, and that's again that is under the the watchful seed of the treasurer. Um, lots of rumors. Uh, feminism. No more promoting feminism. That is psychological warfare. Get rid of that. Um, it can be sold in North Korea if there's necessity. Uh, of course, and that's, that's all up to the Treasury and the uh, commissions under control of the new Treasury. Uh, we're not going to be funding any more of this nonsense. We, um, Glasgow Metals, England's at the top. Great, great news. Uh, Sean Mellon with news unremittedly grim. The celebration of a hike in the woods from Nick Kristoff is a fine tonic. Sean Mallon also says, take some time out today to smell the roses. I need to start doing that. The more uh, we let these depressive forces, the easier it's going to be on everybody. And, um, of course, avoid at all costs corporate counsel, general counsel, attorneys, psychiatrists, uh, judges, other uh, beings that have had contact with the general counsel within the last three months. If you have had contact, please, please, please get tested for the Ebola virus so that we can stop the, uh, the plague before it wipes us out here. There's not a lot of uh, horrifying news today, other than those things. Uh, financially, the United States looks amazingly. It's doing well. The kingdom is doing well. England's doing well. All of these things. Um, well. Uh, Australia sends 157 Tamil asylum seekers to Nauru after they refuse to meet with Indian officials. That's breaking 24 minutes ago um, from the BBC News Asia. Australia sends asylum seekers to Nauru Detention Center. Uh, a group were held at sea for a month after their boat, which sat sail from India, was intercepted in June. They were moved to Australia's mainland to meet Indian officials, but they refused to discuss their claims. The Tamils set sail from Pondicherry in India in June, but are thought to be from Sri Lanka. After landing in Australia, they have been held in the Curtin Immigration Detention Center in a remote region of Western Australia. The group has 50 children. They're either going to be resettled in Nauru or deported to Sri Lanka. Um, if they're not found to be refugees, they will go back to Sri Lanka, not India. Going back to India, where they are likely to have family and friends, is no longer an option. Um, well, let's get a compliance audit in there, see what's going on, uh, full investigation, find the evidence, find out what this little fiasco is asylum seekers are normally called out as criminals however the United States Incorporated has been labeling uh, innocents as criminals for a very long time so we want to make sure that there's 
absolute compliance with the public law at this time. Uh, so we will call out compliance audit on that one as well. Um, interesting. Uh, let me write that down. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, interesting news. And if I don't do anything about it now, I'll forget. Uh, this has been really an interesting journey. Journey, I'll tell you uh, what, because um, well, as always, if I would have known then what I know now, well, it wouldn't have been the same then, would it? So it doesn't matter. Uh, hindsight is always 2020. We always see so greatly in hindsight, and uh, at that point, if we're looking behind us, we're not seeing what's ahead. That's not a great idea. We need to always be uh, accepting of whatever comes at us, as, as, as is written in 1 Corinthians 13. Process all things, and um, eventually, if we follow the truth, everything falls into place, and nothing is left uncovered, as we have so learned. Um, sometimes the hard way, sometimes. Um, with ease, sometimes with great amounts of, of torture behind it if we didn't hear it the first time or if we didn't see the warnings. Um, it's all up to relativity and how you perceive all things and um, ultimately at the end of both paths there's a very narrow gate. And, uh, Oh, it's so beautiful in Matthew 10, Matthew 10, 1. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the first of these apostles was of course Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John and his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, and Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. His twelve disciples sent out after instructing them, quote, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money's belts, or a bag for your journey, or even two coats or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worthy of his support. Whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it, and stay at that house until you leave that city. As you enter the house, give it your greeting. If the house is worthy, give it your blessing or peace. But if it is not worthy, take back your blessing and peace. Whoever does not receive you nor heed your words, as you go out of the house of that city, shake the dust off your feet. Truly I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Well, Sodom and Gomorrah was quite horrifying. And, uh, again, for those that do not receive you, walk on. Shake off the dust off your feet. And let it roll off your back like water. And go forward. It'll it'll be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for that city that rejected you. I'll keep reading a, a slight amount. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so that so be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to the courts and scour you in the synagogues. And you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake, 
his testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but it is the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated for all, by all, because of my name, and it is the one who is endured to the end who will be saved. But whenever they persecute you in that city, flee to the next, for, verily, for truly, I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, and the slave like his master. If they are, if they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, how much more will die they malign the members of the household? They're calling out for the Lord of the Flies. They're calling for the Lord of the Flies. Beelzebub is the Lord of the Flies. You don't want to call out for that unless you're a fly. Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so do not fear. You are more valuable than many, many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will confess him before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on this earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword, for I came to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and the man's enemies will be the members of his own household. He who loves father or more, mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me after me is not worthy of me. He who has found his life will lose it. And he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever in the name of the disciples gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink, Truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. That is our only obligation. The children. There is no other obligation. When Jesus had finished giving instructions to his twelve disciples, he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John, while in prison, heard, one of the works, heard of the works of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to him, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have a gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who does not take offense at me.
As these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind. But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are the kings in palaces? But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, the one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Quote, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. End quote. Quote, Truly I say to you, among those born of women there, has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers of violence, and violence men take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. All we want to do is we stop there. We go over to the Etymology Dictionary. And of course, it's not going to come up because I spelled it wrong. It's not Elijah, it's Elias. The word Elias, Elias, or John the Baptist, Elijah, is from Latin, alias, at another time, or in another way, beyond, different, another, other, in Greek, Armenian, uh, Greek, allos, another. And of course, from the Old English, after that, Alice, meaning otherwise or else. Now in this representation, of course, Ellis Island was a representation of God. It was a representation of John. It was a representation of Jesus. It was represented at its a geographical state, although it is a state of being. Now Elijah, from Elias, E-L-I-A-S is the name of the great Old Testament prophet from Hebrew Elijah literally meaning the Lord is God. And John has been living in prison for a very long time without any witnesses. There were no witnesses. There was nobody coming in to maintain the evidence. John's just been being shoveled off to institutionalized states and kept there by a criminal enterprise. And John's neighbors have all been informants. Every time the uh, sirens go off and the shiny lights appear and the uniforms appear, John's whisked away to prison without any witnesses other than the informants on the ground that have been indoctrinated to assume that John has been doing something wrong and he should be in prison. John hasn't been doing anything wrong. 27 CFR 72.11 says that John is a product in a corporation and that he's supposed to take it according to Congress. Well, that's not going to be occurring anymore. 
you realize who John is, you pick him up. And put him somewhere else. Or leave him to the wolves. Of course, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 11, 16. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in marketplaces who call out to the other children and say, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a di jig, a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came, now they're eating or drinking, and they say, He is a demon, the son of man come eating and drinking. And they say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by, their, by her deeds. And that's where they've been. They've just been sitting there playing the stock market. We, we, we taught you how to fear death and, and mourn. Okay, so go do it now. Go, go mourn each other. And, and I'll offer you then the, the next product of my corporation, which is now psychology or a grief therapist or a grief counselor. I'll send that in there because I taught you how to grieve, so now we've got to exploit that to be the most efficient use of, of uh, administration. So, so you've been living in a gulag, prison camp, a penal colony. And everybody's been indoctrinated by the tree of knowledge. It's not just a tree of knowledge, because they've been beating you over the head with it. So it's become a portable tree of knowledge via the internet. Uh, this thing is a very nasty, nasty, nasty thing to sleep with, because it'll sell you all number of concepts by which you could take up and participate in these how exchanges. You are not negotiable instruments. Matthew 12. At that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Hold on a second. My children are hungry, and you're telling them that you, you, the stuff they're eating is now a commodity? And, and a day is now a commodity? Time is commodity? You're going to tell me that my children can't eat on a certain day, and, and can't work on a certain day, or can't pick food on a certain day? How dare you? This is my kingdom. Why are you telling my children when they can eat, what they can eat, what day they should do these things? These things are are ending. There's there's no uh, necessity any longer for your services, Department of Agriculture and uh, natural resources uh, and other things that are not conducive to life on this planet but are economically efficient for Satan and Satan's children. But he said to them, have you not read what David did when he became hungry, he and his companions? How he entered the house of God and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to eat, nor for those with him, but for the priests alone. Have you heard the story of David? All he does is just eats what he wants to, and that's the end of the story. The priests are the only ones that believe all that fictional stuff that comes from the tree of knowledge, priests and psychiatrists. Why, why the heck would you be listening to them? Matthew 
Matthew 12, 5. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? Wait a second. If a priest is up there on Sunday and it's preaching to you and that's its job, it's working on the Sabbath, isn't it? And, and it's the same thing with another priest that works on a Saturday or a Monday. So, so what is all that? It's, a, it's another product, isn't it? Matthew 12, 6. But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, quote, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, end quote, you would not have condemned the innocent. If I would have told you that uh, by doing your works, you would be held accountable, you didn't hear me. I, I did tell you that. You, you didn't want to hear anything. And then what happens? You and your buddies are gravely ill with Ebola under quarantine, and, and, and the rest of your characters are holed up in Washington, D.C., begging somebody for, for a gun ban to, to prevent you know, the appearance of, of bullet holes as new uh, breathing devices or whatever is the commercial aspect of, of putting holes in, in somebody who's who's done the most horrifying things upon my children. Matthew 12, 8. For the Son of Man is Lord and of the Sabbath. Departing from there, he went into their synagogue, and a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus, asking, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him? And he said to them, What man is there among you who has a sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Have you got mad? If your child is drowning, it doesn't matter what what day it is or, or what time it is, you, you're, you're going to save your child from drowning, and it's the same with all the sheep. These priests come up with the most egregious concepts that are just ridiculous in nature. They're, they're, they're acting as infants. Uh, how much more valuable, then, is a man than a sheep? So then, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the men, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored to normal like the other. But the Pharisee went out and conspired against him as to how they might destroy him. Well, yeah, that's not very economically efficient. If, if you can heal somebody by touch, there's no necessity of doctors and insurance, and psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, internal medicine, uh, biology, microbiology. There, there's no necessity for any of those things. We don't have to study those things if there's a cure in touch, human touch. And of course the attorneys would be screaming. That, that's how they make their money. They make money off of controversy and misery. Matthew 12, 15. But Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from them. Okay, bye, see ya. Many followed him, and he healed them all, and warned them not to tell who he was. This was to fill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Quote, Behold my servant who I'm, I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A battered reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. And in his name the Gentiles will hope. Matthew 
Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him, so that he, the mute man, spoke and saw. All the crowds were amazed and were saying, This man cannot be the son of David. Can he? But when the Pharisee heard this, they said, This man casts out demons only, only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Philippi Jesus, and knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And any city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How will, how then will his kingdom stand? If I, by Beelzebub, cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? For this reason they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or, how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man? And then he can plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who, is not, who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I say unto you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people. But blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak about what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man brings out his good treasure, what is good, and the evil man brings out his evil treasure, what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said unto, unto them, An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as, you, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You have to learn, you have to see in order to realize. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because they repented of the preaching of Jonah and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, Something greater than Solomon is here. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. It does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. order. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there, and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will be also with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the crowds, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside, seeking to speak with him. Someone said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak with you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him, and said, Who is my mother and who is my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Behold, my brother and my my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 13. That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting in this, by the sea, and large crowds gathered to him. So he got out, 
So he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. For when the sun had risen, they were all scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell amongst the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out, and others fell into the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while well seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, quote, You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but you will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return. And I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sour. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown before the road, beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary, and that when afflicted or persecuted arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom seed was sown among the, the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went away. And when the wheat sprouted and bore again, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, for a while you are gathering up the tares. You may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, First grab, gather up the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn, and we'll be back next week, folks. Be well, everybody.